Hello and welcome to GameSack. Today I'm going to take a look at Terra Onion's new product called Mode. This is from the makers of the Mega SD, the Super SD System 3, and the Neo SD. Now, this is an ODE, which stands for Optical Disk Emulator, which means it's emulating the disk drive in the system, not the actual games themselves. And it runs on real hardware. You can put games on micro SD, you can put them on a USB stick or a 2.5 inch drive, either an SSD or the spinny kind. All this costs about $208 before shipping. So what does all this get you? Well, let's take a look and find out. We'll first be installing the mode, which stands for multi or multiple optical disc emulator into a Sega Saturn. This is a spare Saturn that I picked up just for this, because once you remove the optical drive, the games that you physically own become useless until you put it back. I want to keep playing the discs that I own while I can, so I had to get an additional console, which happened to have a dead drive. Installing the mode in either the Saturn or the Dreamcast doesn't require any soldering. Terra Onion offers a downloadable manual that gives you installation instructions, and I highly suggest that you read it. If you don't feel comfortable doing this for yourself and you don't have anyone who can do it for you, then mode is definitely not for you. It's not exactly plug and play like the other products from Terra Onion. After the disk drive is out, you'll need to remove the entire shielding and power supply just so you can remove the four posts that the optical drive used to sit on. That way, the mode can lay flat. Depending on your Saturn model, these steps may be a bit different, so be sure to look at Terra Onion's downloadable manual. Make sure to identify if your Saturn is a 20-pin or a 21-pin version and attach the ribbon cable to the correct slot. You'll also need to attach some power. It also comes with some little sticky feet that you can install, but I won't be using them since I'll need to remove it and put it in my Dreamcast later in this episode. Some Saturns will even need more power fed directly from the power supply which you attach with included wires. This particular Saturn that I have requires it, you need to make sure the switch is flipped in order to use it. If I try to run the mode with a hard drive attached and these extra power cables aren't hooked up, then it won't even see the drive. But give it a try to see if it works without this first. I'm using an SSD to illegally store my games on. Make no mistake about it, I will be going to jail. All of Terra Onion's products come with a guaranteed jail sentence for piracy. It's a neat little bonus feature. Setting up whatever kind of drive you use, even if it's a micro SD card, you'll need to put all of your Saturn games into a folder called Saturn and all of your Dreamcast games into a Dreamcast folder. Inside those folders, you can store them any way you want. It's pretty self-explanatory. Once everything is installed and working, turning on the power will give you the mode menu. Once you find a game that you want to play, press A and the system will run through its Saturn startup screen and the game will begin. Suddenly, you're playing a Sega Saturn game without a disc! If you want to run a multi-disc game, you'll be prompted which disc you want to boot up. This of course is assuming that you've installed all the discs in the same folder on your drive, like so. Back in the menu, you can toggle devices with the Z button, so you can actually have an SD card and a hard drive hooked up all at once and switch between them. You can't have a USB stick and a hard drive attached simultaneously though, as a hard drive blocks the USB port. They probably should have just left out the USB port. Pressing C will take you into the options. You can have it sort your games by a list, which is pretty fast, or by game covers, which is slow, but you have to download and install all of the artwork for that to work. You then need to go in each and every folder and have the mode scan it. This is neat, I guess, but it is so slow. And why does Tomb Raider show the back of the box instead of the front? It reminds me of all the hyperspin shells and whatnot for emulators where people pay more attention to the GUI than the actual games. List view is much better and faster. You really don't need anything more. Auto region patch lets you play games from other regions on your unmodified Saturn without a region bypass card. Disable lid switch means that your Sega Saturn thinks that the lid is always closed if this is turned on. If you're running your Saturn without the top installed, you want this turned on. Leave the starting video mode to whatever region your console is. Video system output pen is useful only if you have your console modified for both PAL and NTSC output. Same with the reset input and output options. The boot BIOS menu takes you to the Saturn CD player screen to manage your save files and whatnot. Check update will look on the hard drive for a firmware update as normally it only scans the SD card for that. Speaking of updates, some things that I'll be pointing out may have already been fixed by the time you see this video. However, since this is a video and not an online article, it can't keep up with future firmware updates. So be sure to check Terra Onion's website or Discord to see what the latest firmware offers. I do have some nitpicks with the menu. My first nitpick is the lack of any kind of color coding for moving back and forth between the directories. Everything is white and it all looks like a game. 
Next, the menu has these question marks in the game sometimes, and I don't know what's going on with that. There's certainly nothing askew there in the actual directories. Lastly, the menu runs in interlaced mode, which means if you use an upscaler, you'll lose video sync for a while anytime you start a game, which is kind of annoying, especially if you're trying to capture video footage. I wish there were an option to have the menu run in 240p like there is on the N64 EverDrive. The mode will run games from other regions automatically just fine. Here I'm running a Japanese game on my unmodified US Saturn. However, keep in mind that mode can't give you access to games that require RAM carts like X-Men vs Street Fighter here. It can be used with a real RAM cart or an action replay. It's a bit weird because the console starts up in the action replay menu, then to the mode menu, then to the action replay menu again, and then finally to the game. Once it's there, of course it runs perfectly fine. You can even play European games like Shinobi X, which has different music than either the Japanese or US release of the same game. The compatibility so far is excellent. It's worked with every game I've thrown at it so far, but of course I don't have the time to test each and every variation of every title from every region. I apologize for that. You can also run some translated games without having to worry about burning a disc, like Police Knots, which is a game I highly recommend playing. Or Grandia, which I own but could never get very far due to the language barrier. Or even Dragon Force 2. This one blinked out on me, though the sound kept playing. Grandia also did the same thing another time I ran it, so these translations have maybe a 60% chance of working, and even if they start fine, you'll probably get a black screen eventually. I couldn't tell you why. At least that's what happens with the firmware that I'm currently using. Also, keep in mind that the mode offers no features like save states, cheats, the ability to store save files, or anything that you might see in flash cartridges for the 8 and 16-bit systems. So, how are the load times? Well, they can be quite a bit faster than a real disk. The initial load time on Sonic 3D Blast takes 28 seconds and 19 frames to load the first stage after pressing start on the game select screen on a Saturn with a good drive and laser. The mode will load the same thing in 21 seconds even, that's over 8 seconds faster. Overall it's quite a pleasant experience. Very long easy right. Well, now we know how it works with the Saturn, and the Saturn has over 16 different motherboard revisions, at least, so there's still a few compatibility issues that they're ironing out with the firmware, but I'm sure they're going to get it done. The good news, though, is that it works much easier with the Dreamcast, so let's check that out. Installing the mode on the Dreamcast is pretty easy just as long as your console has a 0 or a 1 on the bottom. If it has a 2, well, you can just go straight to hell. Simply open the system up, remove three screws, and pull out the optical drive. The mode simply inserts onto the port that the optical drive came out of. You're done! Well, unless you want to install the sticky feet. Like I said, pretty easy. On the Dreamcast, you'll find that the mode's menu is very similar to how it is on the Saturn, as you'd expect. You have a few different things in the options menu. Auto VGA patch attempts to force the game to boot into VGA mode, but there are still a few dumb games that refuse to do this. You can enable GD-ROM seek time if you're having compatibility issues with the game. Turning this on might help it. GD-ROM read speed can also be adjusted. Of course, you're going to want it as slow as possible, because things that are fast and responsive are dumb. Of course, I'm kidding. Max it out, boys. You can still view the games in list or covers mode. Again, you need to install the cover art, and each and every folder will need to be individually scanned. This mode is much more responsive than it is on the Saturn, but it still draws pretty slowly. As a result, I prefer list mode much more, especially since you can't tell what a game is if there's no cover until you highlight it. Also, the icon to go up a level in the directory structure has artwork for a game on it. I have similar complaints about the menu here with everything colored white no matter what it is, but at least I'm not getting any question mark entries like I do when it's hooked up to the Saturn. Also, there are sound effects when this is hooked up to the Dreamcast and there's no toggle in the options to disable them. The sound effects are the same as Terra Onion's Mega SD flash card. They're not annoying or anything, but I just think there should be a toggle. 
Overall, I like the menu better than the one created for the GDMU. For one, it comes with a menu already, no need to go out and get your own. Secondly, it's way more user friendly, loads faster, and it looks better too. And of course, adding games to the mode is infinitely easier than adding them to the GDMU. Mode works with standard GDI and CDI images as well as the redump set. Your game folders on your drives can have the real game names instead of just numbered folders. Anyway, once you find a game you want to play, just press A and it'll load. Suddenly, you're playing a Dreamcast game without a disc! Wow, what will technology bring next? I did encounter a weird issue though. I tried to start Dynamite Cop and it asked me which of the six discs I'd like to boot. Of course, this is a single disc game. I backed out and I pressed it again and suddenly now I get to choose from one of seven discs. The game is growing! I choose disc one and Shenmue boots up. What the hell? So I powered down the Dreamcast and tried again. No discs to choose from this time. It booted straight into the game, the correct one. In fact, this behavior can be replicated by selecting a game, deselecting it, and then selecting it again. Most of the time, the correct game would actually load up though. Very odd behavior, but I'm sure that this will all be addressed in a firmware update in the future. Once again, the compatibility is great and it runs every game I've thrown at it so far aside from the weird menu quirkiness that I mentioned. Load times are faster than a real disc in most cases, but not much. Even with the GD-ROM read speed maxed out and the GD-ROM seek time disabled, the initial load time on Dead or Alive 2 is 6 seconds and 3 frames compared to 6 seconds and 20 frames using a real disc. The GD-MU on the other hand loads the same image in 3 seconds and 4 frames, which is about twice the speed of the mode. Get ready, <laughs> Once again, the mode simply can't offer any special features like save states, cheats, save backups, or those kinds of things. Overall though, the mode is a great way to play either your Saturn or Dreamcast collection, or even both. With optical drives failing and discs rotting, this is the perfect way to play games on real hardware. Or rather it will be after a few more firmware updates, but that definitely will happen. If you're one of those people who are just itching to comment, or you could just emulate them for free lol well, you are so stupid, then this product is not for you. However, keep in mind that some people enjoy playing on real hardware, and that's okay. And for those people, this is a good way to do that if you don't mind the price. Well, that's the Terra Onion mode. Honestly, I don't recommend moving it back and forth between the Saturn and the Dreamcast a whole bunch like I was doing in this episode. It's not a cartridge, it really wasn't designed for that. However, if you're really rich or just want to spend the money, you can get two modes, one for your Saturn and one for the Dreamcast. I mean, at roughly 208 US dollars a piece, that's kind of a big bite out of the wallet, but if it's worth it for you, well, it's worth it for you. I do like how it works with a lot of different formats that you can rep, like you know your bin and queue, your uh, GDI, your CDI, your disk juggler files, what have you. I like that it's not just compatible with one format or another. That's really nice. Anyway, what do you guys think of the mode? Are you gonna get one for your Saturn? Are you gonna get one for your Dreamcast? Are you gonna get one for both? Are you not gonna get any at all? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching GameSack. Are you feeling down in the dumps? What in the hell? Do you need a more exciting video game console in your life? Where's that voice coming from? You might need a Sega Dreamcast to enhance your very existence. Seriously, why is there a disembodied voice talking to me in my house? Am I losing my mind? I'm telling you that you need to buy a Sega Dreamcast in order to be happy. It seems to be coming from over here, but there's nothing there. Be sure to buy the Sega Dreamcast on September 9th, 1999 for only $199.99. Not only am I hearing voices, but these voices think it's 1999! Reserve your Sega Dreamcast today at Software Etc. and Electronics Boutique! Show yourself, demon!